crochet and welcome to Friday Fun Live. Yay! <laughs> I can't believe it's Friday. I don't know what happened to this week, but it just kind of went poof. It just zoomed on through. Um, I know what happened. Um, for three days, Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday, I've been very busy helping my friend Lana Ford move her So Original Yarn store all the way. Make sure, th make sure this is off. Okay. All the way from, uh, let's see, Sandy Spring, Maryland to Columbia, Maryland. And um, boy, boy, is that a job. She's got a lot more work to do. And I'm going to check in with her later today once I'm done with the live and just, you know, see what I can do. Uh, if you can just imagine, it's moving it about 25 minutes away from where she was. And it makes it now about a 45 minute trip for me. But it's a, it's a destination location, right? So I'm going to still make it my my duty <laughs> to visit this life, lovely lady and all her wonderful yarn. Let me go ahead and say hey to some of you all. Thank you so much for being so patient and waiting in the chat. Um, I guess you all saw Esther's message. She's um, not able to be with us today, but we're just so thankful to her. And thank you all for, um, you know, Sherry for, for welcoming her and wishing her well and um, for your sweet comment there. And Alana, um, she says, I'm ready for a great time with my crochet buddies. Me too. And um, and wish you a happy 4th of July. Oh, thank you, Archer and Ace. I think we're up to $35 now. Let me write that down. Thank you so much for your contribution there. Um, let's see. We are working towards another, another parody song. Um, and let me go ahead and just say thank, thank, thank you so much for your generosity. And for those of you who don't know, whenever you contribute to the, um, the, the chat there, it, uh, it goes to either one of, to one of two charities, depending on the month and how I'm alternating it, either to the Shriners Hospital for Children or to the Rancho 3M Orphanage, which is in Guadalupe, Mexico. So those are the two things that are near and dear to my heart. And that's what I love. Some of the things that we love to do with that from the, the um, group chat here, the super chat, I think is what it's called. Ah, anyway, um, so uh, Lynn, thank you for being with us today. And thank you for your kind words uh, from Ottawa, Canada. Wow. And, and Johnny, it's so good to see you. I'm so glad um, you're in the chat today. Again, got my nails on. <laughs> thank you so much for that. This has been so much fun. Um, I, I put them on a little bit early, but just trying to get ready for the 4th of July. I don't think they're going to show up in any of the, the actual videos until until this one comes out, which will be in about two weeks, not on, oh, about a week and a half, not on Monday, but the Monday after that is when I'm planning on releasing um, the Lacey Stole, and that's made out of 100% cotton. And it was just fun to have pretty nails for that one. And um, Pat Dancers... Good to see you. Thank you for your greeting. And Yuchi from Germany and Diane and Jan and Joni and um, Love to Craft. Thank you so much for being here. And um, I hope you all noticed I did put the, the slow mode on. I'm a little shorthanded today, moderator wise. Just don't tell any of the trolls that. Um, so I, I'm just trying to try to slow things down so I can get to everything and in and, and, and a in a timely fashion. Um, Jan says, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, only 70 and cloudy in Illinois today. Wow. And um, yeah, it's a lot cooler here today. And that is so welcome. I couldn't wait until it rained. Um, we really needed the rain this week. It was so hot in the high 90s. Um, let's see. Tracy Fowler's in the chat. Yep. Denise. Hey, Denise. It's good to see you there. Happy 4th to you, too. And Rosie from Lincolnshire, UK. Wow. So getting our evening for you all. Time for your uh, time for your din-din, right? Time for dinner. And um, JR says, good morning from Las Vegas, where it's 92 degrees. Hmm, that's probably cool for you guys, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, well, stay cool. Drink lots of water there. And... Um, Let's see, Cindy says, hi, Bonnie. Just wanted to say thank you for your tutorials and happy 4th of July weekend to everyone. Thank you, Cindy. These are so much fun to do. Um, and Wanda is wishing everybody a happy and blessed 4th, say, 4th of July holiday. Thank you, Wanda. 
and Brat's mom is in the chat. Um, so glad to have you here and, and discovering hope from cloudy Rochester, New York. Yeah. I hope it's, I hope the, I hope it's not raining up there. There's a, a dear friend of mine is finally able to have uh, the memorial service for her father who passed away during COVID and, and they couldn't even be, they weren't even allowed by the state of New York to be at their father's funeral. I don't understand that. I'll just say it out loud. I don't understand that. But they are finally able to get the family together again. So I'm just really, really was praying for her this morning and just hoping that the weather was cooperative because I know she had planned such a lovely service for her dad and her family. Um, we have Bonnie Bunting in the chat. And let's see, bon Bonnie Laurel. Wow, great name, ladies. Um, and Bonnie Radcliffe. Wow, three in a row. Um, first, that that's that's astounding. I, I rarely find somebody that has the same name as me, but to have three uh, in a row, that's, that's amazing. That's great. Um, she says, first time to be able to catch you live from Kentucky. Yay. I got a lot of great friends in um, Louisville and Winchester, and I love to visit Kentucky. It's such a beautiful state to drive through. And we have God Bless America 2019. That's a cool name. Um, it says, I like the top. Did I make it? Yes, I did make this. This is actually the same pattern as the top behind me here. This is, uh, I think it's Bonnie's Easy Crochet Top. It's It's on my... On my channel, I probably got the name wrong, but it's an easy pattern. And if you just go to my homepage and click videos, it'll be in the listing there. And it has this lovely 92-year-old model modeling this for me, my mother-in-law. She did a fabulous job for that. And um, yeah, we're the same size. It's kind of cool. Um, so whenever we go shopping, if something fits me pretty well, I know it's going to fit her. So I can get it if I want to bless her. It's easy to do. Um, let me go ahead and catch this up just to make sure that I'm not buffering or anything. Okay. We have Charlotte. Um, she says, hi, so glad you said slow speed. I thought I'd messed up something. Yeah. If, if you're having trouble posting a lot of things, I put like a 30 second delay there just so that I can try to keep up today and just try to keep everybody safe. And, and, uh, I may need to, yeah, I may, I may need to look into getting some additional moderators for the chat here and there. So if anybody's interested in doing that, and what it would entail is just making sure that the comments are appropriate and um, not offensive to anybody, honestly. And if you are interested in doing that, just email me, bonniebay at me.com, and I can set you up as a moderator. Um, it's a volunteer position, I'm sorry to say, but... Um, if that's something that you would want to do, just just contact me and um, and we can maybe work something out. Let me also say one thing about the scheduling for the Friday Live uh, time. Um, the next two weeks, that would be July 9th and July 16th. I'm not going to be able to have the Friday Fun Live. Um, I'm, I'll think about possibly doing it on Thursday of next week, but... I'll get back to you, but right now I'm just going to say there's not going to be Friday Fun Live for two weeks. We're just going to, um, I have to do that because next Friday I'm going to be teaching a six-hour class, ooh, six-hour class on Zoom for the Crochet Guild of America. There are a few seats left in that. It is becoming a full class, but there are a couple more seats left. So if you are interested in signing up for the... And this is what we'll be doing in those six hours. We're going to be learning all of these stitches. This is the Erin Sampler um, scarf. And we're going to be learning all these. Now, many of you may already know these stitches. You probably don't even need the class. But if it's something, if you're new to cable crochet and you want an absolute crash course on a bunch of stitches, I believe there are at least nine stitches that you're going to be learning um, in this class. It will be three hours, and then we'll have one hour break, a nutritional interval for lunch, and then we'll, then we'll return to this. And what I'm anticipating, whenever I've taught this class, what I have done is I've gone through half of the scarf, which covers all of the stitches, and then your homework afterwards is to do the mirror image of that back home. Okay, or... or um, well, gosh, you're going to be at home anyway. I'm thinking of a class, physical class. But, you know, once you finish 
half of the, the stitches in class, then you can finish the rest of it um, afterwards. And um, so if you're interested in signing up for that, like again, there's just a couple seats left. Look at the video description below and you'll see a link for the CGOA and for the conference and you can sign up for that. I do have another class later on in the month and that information is in the video description. Let me get the exact date. This would be um, for Wednesday, July 28th. And this is uh, Big and Bold Cables, a new approach to larger crocheted cables. I'm gonna be covering um, things like the large elongated cable, um, the large honeycomb cable, the large wheat cable. Uh, I'm also going to do the Saxon cable, which is one of the newer um, cabling woven stitch things that I've added to some of my patterns this past year. And those of you who are my watch subscribers um, know what I'm talking about. So if that's something that interests you, that's only a three hour class. And that's going to be, again, Wednesday, July 28th from 1 to 4 p.m. I think that's Eastern time. I'm pretty sure that's Eastern time, but I can double check with you on that. Um, so there, so that's that's why I'm not gonna be here July 9th, but July 16th is my 33rd wedding anniversary. So I, as much as I love you guys, I love my husband more, so I'm gonna be, I don't know what we're gonna do yet. We don't really have definite plans, but my hope is that we'll be able to just get, have a little overnight getaway somewhere. Um, somewhere locally, but um, we've just been apart so much in the last year and a half with, um, you know, caring for family members and, you know, COVID and all the other stuff that we just really need to make that time. And I know you understand that. This is such a, such a great thing. And, and it'll just give me a little bit of break too from, you know, from, from the YouTube stuff just for a little while and just to try to get the creative juices, you know, flowing a little bit better again. So, Anyway, let me go ahead and try to get back to your comments here. Um, and Michelle says that 73 and cloudy in Montana. Highs after highs in the 90s. Yeah, enjoy that. I'm enjoying the ooh, enjoying the break. Even though it's like it's like 70 when I went out there today. It felt great. Um, oh, I just saw something here. Hold on a second. Is there another hurricane out there, Johnny? Good golly. It's that time of the year again. Um, all in the path of Hurricane Elsa, stay safe. Oh, I have to go check the news. I didn't even know that was out there. I've been in my own little world. Thank you for letting me know. I hope I hope you guys and all my Florida friends are okay. I hope all my Florida, Carolina, Georgia, I hope all you guys are okay. Uh, as well as those on the, you know, on the um, West Coast and up into Louisiana and Panhandle. Good grief. I have to go check a map and see where, where, that, where that is. Um, and Cherry B48 says uh, 68 degrees in Akron, Ohio. Woo, that sounds good to me. Um, Veronica says, hello, first time for me to see you live. Greetings from Germany. Well, welcome, my German friend. Um, that It's so great to, great to you know, see these places from different parts of the world. And I so love Germany. Um, more than half of my relatives came from there um, when we had our DNA analyzed or whatever they call it. Um, it's mostly Germany, a little bit of Switzerland, and, and about 33% Irish. How about that? Um, very cool. And a little bit of Native American Indian mixed in. So go figure. I mean, uh, a few percent even. So that, that was pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, and we have Annette from Texas. Uh, Mary. Um, Mary Jane from Wichita, Kansas. Oh, thank you for your, for your sweet comment. Um, Mary Jane, thank you for watching all the way from Wichita. And um, we have Luz Martinez says, hola, buenos dias. So buenos dias to you too. Um, uh, and let's see, Grace says, hello, first time. Finally here, finally caught you live. Well, I'm so glad you could be here, Grace. And um, and uh, God bless America to, to 2019 says, 88 degrees in Concord, California. Whew. Uh, but probably a nice, nice dry 88 degrees, I'm guessing. At least that's the way it, it was wonderful when I was out there a couple years ago. And, um, oh, we have Grace from, Grace is from Baltimore, Maryland, just right up the road from us, Grace. I'm down here in Gaithersburg. So welcome neighbor. <laughs> um, we're, um, the store, 
that we moved Lana to is going to be closer to you, at least than it was. It's going to be in Columbia, and it's not that far from Baltimore. So maybe you can stop in once she gets set up. It's called So Original, and I'm hoping to do, you know, some some book signings and stuff like that up there once she's ready for her big opening. Um, and Denise Graham says, uh, Hi, Bonnie. Love to lovely be with you again. Hope you are well. Have a wonderful fourth you and your family um, from Denise loving thoughts from Denise in Salisbury UK wow that's so cool thank you Denise and um, Elaine first time in Massachusetts wow my I've spent my honeymoon year in Massachusetts Elaine up in Andover Massachusetts my husband would catch the tea into Boston every day and I would drive to Reading and worked at where did I work Addison Wesley Publishing Company um, as an order taker, just doing odds and end jobs, you know, since it was too late to get a teaching job at that point. And we have JR um, says, God bless America. I used to live in Pittsburgh. My adult children are in Martinez. Miss the Bay Area. Cool, and cool weather. Yeah. Um, oh, Emily is there. Hey, Emily. It's so good to see you in the chat. And, um, Ah, Hannah is here. Hannah, you're working today. I thought you'd be out playing with the kids. My goodness. Thank you for being here. I wasn't expecting you. And um, I have Deb see Jan and Pat and Deborah, everybody saying hey to Hannah. And we have Jake Parker and um, Grace from Northwest Washington State. Wow. Well, um, we have, let's see, Elizabeth Stocks from England. Uh, she says, love the top you work. Thank you, Elizabeth. It is a very, this by the way, is very easy to make. Um, if you are new to garments, it actually might be something that you want to try. But what I would recommend if you are making this, no matter if it's your first garment or your hundredth garment, is have a sweater or a t-shirt or something nearby that really fits you the way you like it to fit so that you can constantly compare to make sure that that it's going to be close to what will fit you and what you enjoy wearing. Um, that I just recommend that. And, you know, in that sense, you know, the, the stitch count and all is a little bit flexible. You can flex it a little bit on this or flex the size of the hook. Um, and depending on the type of cotton or fibers that you use, it is using a much thinner yarn. Uh, you may have to, um, you may have to work with the gauge a bit. Okay. But um, it's definitely, I think, very doable um, if you're if you're just intimidated by garments, and because you know, a lot of it is based upon like the the length of the sleeve and so forth. It's not so much a row count as much as it is just measuring it, and getting out your your tape measure, and you know you do a certain stitch until it's this long or that long, and and you can even measure that right up against your uh, like I say your favorite garment. That you like to wear a lot of times I'll just lay them both down you know on a flat surface and then put it right on top of that garment that I like so that I'm like hmm do I like this fit and uh, and then I just go from there so don't be yeah don't be afraid and it's okay to get messy and to make mistakes I mean we all do it but we learn the best from that um let's see oh we have Catherine from Yellville, Arkansas. Well, oh, that's a cool name. <laughs> um, and let's see, Jake Parker says here in, in Missouri, it is 78 degrees and it isn't humid or anything. It is like a nice fall day in July. Great. En enjoy that. Definitely enjoy that. All right. Um, let's see. I just got a lot more loading. I, even though it's on slow mode, it's still, it's it's still, still coming in, and I can't keep up, uh, which is a great problem. We have Virginia from Delaware. Thank you for your sweet comment, Virginia, and um, and Bonnie Bunting. Thank you. She says happy anniversary. Um, have a wonderful day celebrating. Yes, thank you, thank you. It, it it doesn't seem like it's been 33 years. It really doesn't. But then again, when you have a child that's about to turn 30. Yeah, I guess, I guess it has been more than 33 years. So, yeah, it, it, I've been just really blessed by my guy, for sure. Um, 
Oh, Shirley, I'm glad you can join us today too. Uh, Shirley Guthrie, just nice comment there. And um, Deborah says, I love your, your, I guess she means live chats. Don't you love, uh, don't you love uh, the correction there? Um, they are so calming and inspiring. Thank you, Deborah. And, um, and Archer Nay says she's working on the summer sweater and it's so fun. I, that, that's great. And, um, okay, I must've missed something. Okay, Virginia Pendleton, did I miss something here? I just see prayer requests and I'm like, oh dear, what did I miss? Well, maybe Hannah can tell me um, if I've missed something there. Um, all right, I'm getting a little slow, guys. Okay, um, JR says, if my youngest daughter was born in Boston, you might have been, there's so many hospitals there, but my husband actually worked at Mass General. He was doing an, doing a postdoc there um, in the, um, back in the day when, when a magnetic resonance, you know, MRIs were, were still experimental. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Um, he's, he was working with that before it was, you know, publicly, publicly, you know, the thing that the, uh, the diagnostic test to do like it is today. Um, so he's been in research for a long time. We have, is it D from San Antonio, Texas? Is that a D I or D L? It's hard to, for me to tell. And, um, sorry about that. And, um, and Swati's in the chat. Hey, Swati. So good to see you. She said, I'm late because of work, but better late than never. Absolutely. We'll take you whenever we can get you. I promise you, my friend. Um, we have Leon says, hope all you are well from the Isle of Wight. Wow, that is so cool. Um, that reminds me, I, I know the Isle of Man is different, but um, we've been watching uh, watching the, the Tour de France. I don't know if any of you all like to watch that, but my husband has to watch it. And so I sit and get to watch it with him. And we're really excited that the, the sprinter who's won He's, he's like in his, in his mid thirties. He's like one of the, the people, these old guys that people put into the washed up category. And he has won two days already, two days of this. And it just makes me so happy to see these older people show the, uh, show, you know, I, I'm not, not, not out trying to better anybody or anything like that, but it was just kind of, kind of cool to see a guy do so well. I can't remember his name right now, but um, he's from the Isle of Man. So I, I don't know how far Isle of Man is from the Isle of Wight. I need to get out my geography book and look, but um, that is just so cool that to see people from that part of the world. And we've got that on our list. We want to travel there someday. Um, want to see some of these out of the way places. Uh, and Carla is with us. So hello, everyone. Happy Friday. How are you all doing? And Freaky Geek, anybody got an extra Kit Kat? Give her a break. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, Freaky Geek. Um, actually, I bought something at this store. I probably shouldn't have, but I'm getting ready to travel again down to South Carolina in a few days. And um, I got my milk duds all packed and ready to go. <laughs> that's my, uh, that's my, my sneaky treat there. And uh, let's see. Oh, thank you, Sandra. She's wishing everybody a happy 4th of July. And um, thank you, Carla, for your sweet comment. Well, um, let me go ahead. And I, I am not caught up and I may not get to everybody's comment, but I wanted to show you something that I, it, I guess is kind of a 4th of July thing, uh, but I just have a little story to go with it. This is a something that I made long, long time ago. And it was something that my mom had saved and it was in her cedar chest. So, you know, um, so I was able to, you know, take this out. And um, it's something that I made. Let's see. I don't even remember how old I was. I was either somewhere between 11 and 13 years old. And I think this is, was in a Crochet World magazine. I Ironically, I couldn't locate a copy of that. I don't have the originals because in my home in Florida, I we didn't have we didn't have indoor air conditioning ever. 
So we were one, yeah, we were one of those families. We didn't have, you know, everything. We were on cross on the other side of the tracks, I guess you could say. And um, it got hot there. It got humid there. So the magazines, it, it didn't, they didn't survive. Um, and that reminds me, I have a video coming out on Monday on how to take care of your yarn stash. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, uh, well, I won't, won't even get into all the details, but it's going to be, you know, pr protecting your your yarn. But everything that I say in there is also about protecting the clothes. Uh, if you have a wool coat in your closet, you know, everything that, that, that we talk about with yarn applies 100% to your clothing that you wear, clothing that you pack away each year if you live in the North where you have more than one wardrobe. Um, but anyway, the, the magazines did not survive. They, they got moldy and, you know, they're not, not worth getting sick and keeping. Um, but I did notice that there are some people selling this pattern and I doubt that it's legal. Um, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> that, that topic again, I'm not going to beat that one over. I'm not going to, you know, beat that, that horse dead again. But, um, but yeah, this this is was from I believe a crochet rule magazine, okay. And no, I'm not going to do this for my channel because I don't own the pattern. But I did make this from a magazine. This is a top that you wear over a bathing suit, and that was mostly what I liked because, um, you know, back then we were only about 20 minutes, 20 25 minutes from you know a number of beaches down in South Florida when I was growing up. Okay. So that's, that's kind of fun. Now it's made out of hundred percent acrylic, which would probably make you sweat to death if you put it on over your bathing suit. Um, but you know, back in the day, there wasn't a whole lot of, um, there wasn't a whole lot of yarns to choose from. There was just the, you know, just the, the you know, the four ply or what you, we used to call it four ply, but I know in the UK, Four ply means something different, but this was the worsted weight or Aran weight yarn. It was either that or thread crochet. And I promise you that was the only stuff that I ever saw for decades in the store. Well, that's not the fun part. Okay. This is the fun part that goes with it. <laughs> and I am not going to model this for you. Actually, I never wore it because I couldn't figure out how you can, <laughs> what would happen if it got wet? This is the bottom part of, yeah, a bikini. Can you believe that? Okay, and, and uh, here's the top. If I can get it to not be twisted. Here we go. So the top would be worn like this. Okay, so I know you all want to rush to the store and make one of these, right? Ha ha ha. <laughs> Bad joke. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this actually, it, what's interesting is even though I don't wear these now and, and I only wore it like to model it when I was a kid and then we got a good laugh and then that was about it because again, I don't know what would happen if this got wet. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> but um, but even by, by today's standards, this is really modest, you know, compared to, to what, what is out there today. Um, again, you know, that's, you know, it's got a lot of coverage there and you got your little tie. So anyway, I thought that would be kind of fun to show you. I never showed anybody what this looked like. And this yarn, you know, being acrylic, it's held up. I mean, this is more than, um, more than, let's see, 50? No, it's it's in the 40 something, whatever the math is. Um, I made this, you can guess, um, this was getting ready for 1976 for the bicentennial. For those of you who remember that, um, that was uh, the year Jimmy Carter became president and um, all kinds of crazy things happened. That was my first year of junior high school. We didn't call it middle school. We called it junior high school. <laughs> I could come up with a couple other names for it, but I, I, I won't say them publicly. <laughs> um, it was quite a shock. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, Oh, Diane just said she just celebrated 39 years. Congratulations, Diane. Um, so, so yeah. Um, let me just make just see if there's anybody new to the chat. Um, oh, thank you, Hannah. Um, says somebody likes my crochet earrings. Thank you. Um, I, I got these from a seller off of Etsy, and I think it was her last pair. Um, but I do, I do have, um, 
I do have some others that I have made and occasionally I'll send them out as a gift, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Jan says, I was a baby when I got married. <laughs> I don't know about that, Jan. I felt like I was the last person left. Um, I was 25 and um, which is young now to get married. But back then, you know, people were you know, getting married right out of high school, right out of college. Um, we didn't get married after we had everything. You know, we, we got married and and um, didn't have a whole lot except some college debts. And um, we lived life together. And um, we, instead of, um, my daughter, Becky, and my son, Caleb, had a very wise professor at Liberty University. And one thing I remember him telling the people there, to the students there at Liberty University, he said, number one, you're never going to have enough money to get married. And number two, you're never going to have enough money to have children. So you have to trust God on this. And, and he said that there are two kinds of marriages. There's a corporate merger where everybody has their money and they, they get married. And then you have a startup marriage where you, you get married and you, and you live together and you, you work it out. You, you build something together as a team. And I guess that's the kind of marriage we had because we definitely were not a corporate merger. Um, not with not with what I owed in college, even, even by today's standards, it wasn't much in college loans, but back on the, the value of the dollar in the 1980s, it was a lot of money. So, you know, working hard to, to repay and, and everything. So, um, but, but yeah, I didn't feel like a baby, but when I look back, you know, ugh, I guess maybe I was, <laughs> I definitely didn't know much. I thought I knew a lot more than I did. And that's for sure. <laughs> As most people, um, in their, in their twenties and, you know, yeah, the older I get, the more I realize I just don't know. Um, and JR says the only in one garment I ever crocheted won first place in the Ventura County in California fair back in 1983. Yay. It was a popcorn stitch sweater. Well, that's cool. What a great memory. JR, you should get get some of your things that you're working on now and enter them in your fair and your local fair wherever you are. I, I really encourage you all to do that, especially if things are opening up in your area. Um, you know, get out there and, and enjoy life. You know how we all know how quickly things happen and how quickly the opportunities pass. So I would just say, you know, depending on your comfort level, but get out there and and, you know, do it. Enjoy yourself. You know, encourage others who are entering and 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 do what you can. Um, oh, thank you, Franca. Thank you for your kind comment there. Wishing me a happy anniversary. Um, oh, Sandra also says, yeah, says has a good uh, suggestion here with the tops. Is also try on your summer top as you make your top. Absolutely, I do that a lot. Uh, I I I do a lot of that. I try to make sure no one's watching in case it looks absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, I do that. Um, and Shirley says, Bonnie, when you do your clothing, I know a lot of people use cotton, but is acrylic okay to use too? Shirley, absolutely. It it depends on how you react to to um, acrylic. Um, I, I'm a kind of a, I guess I've become kind of a fiber snob when it comes to things that I wear, even when I'm buying shirts off a rack at the store. Um, I, I have seen some beautiful tops and as soon as I find out that it's made of acrylic, I have to, I have to pass on them because I know that it will make me sweat immediately. And I just, it just doesn't breathe well enough for me personally, but some people who are cold natured need that kind of um, fabric. They need the acrylic to help keep them warm. I am not one of them. I like something that's going to breathe um, as much as possible. So that's why I, I like the cottons, the rayons, the tinsel, um, you know, those those kinds. Of, even, even the process, natural, you know, people say, oh, rayon's not natural. Well, it's been processed. I get that. Um, but but it still breathes much better. I, at least I, I think personally it breathes, you know, better than, let's say, a polyester would Um but, but some people love the poly, the polyester fabrics out there look fantastic. So definitely if you want to use, um, you know, a thinner acrylic yarn or even a cotton acrylic blend, that's fine. I mean, it's, it's whatever, um, works for you. I, I just, uh, just kind of, uh, a 
relating, you know, cotton's more for the summer and, you know, and I kind of like to do the, the wools um, and the alpacas and more the natural, you know, silk is nice too. A lot of times silk is blended with the stuff that I use, uh, but it's really nice for those natural fibers in the cooler climates, because even though they do keep you warm, there's, there's still a breathable quality to them and uh, they do help wick away moisture and stuff. So, um, <laughs> Love to Craft says, I'm just three years behind you, Bonnie. Our 30th wedding anniversary is in November, God willing. Well, congratulations. That is, that's a huge milestone. Um, that, that is wonderful. Um, yeah, congratulations on that. And best wishes for many, many, many more. Let's see if we have any other. And Kelly says she's listening and watching from Tucson. Um, okay, I just got a bunch more comments. But let me show you some yarns since we're talking about cotton yarns. I was helping Lana, and Lana brought this out. She says, oh, you should try this for one of your tops. So, um, and in her store, this retails for $8.99. This is 100% mercerized cotton. If I'm saying that right, 371 yards. It feels really nice, and and when I wound it up, it it it's you know it's just beautiful, beautiful yarn. And this is a number two weight, I believe. Let's see, does it say? Well, I can tell you that's just what it feels like to me. So I got. I got four of these so that I can have a little bit extra when I'm, you know, making a top. Now this, I could, could easily um, use this yarn to make, to make another one of these. Since I already have a pink top like this though, I'm thinking I might do something different with it. Um, you can use the lace pattern. Uh, you could also work the Bonnie's cabled. Let me go get it for you right here. This is the one that I was... I was working on last week. This yarn is just a tad bit thinner than this, but I think it would work very well even with, you know, with a top like this. Although I do have other yarn that I'm going to be making another one like this. It's kind of a kind of a blue color that it's kind of um kind of reminds me of blue jeans because it's it's faded and dyed in a particular way that it's it's almost like it's hand dyed, but I don't think it is. So, yeah, lots of lots of things you can do with this. And for this top, I would use three of these. This is, again, I've never used this, but it feels really nice. And it's by a company called Circulo. It's called Ann. And, okay, made in Brazil. Okay, so, again, it's a lower cost, but yet a high, higher quality yarn. I just wanted to show that to you. Let's see what else we got. Oh yes, thank you guys for your, your care, your prayers, your concerns. Last week, last week when I went live, I had just gotten a call, well, I had gotten a call that morning that my husband had to have our family car um, towed off. Um, he was had, had to exit off of 270 because it looked like a mosquito sprayer behind him because he was burning so much oil and the oil light came on and um, and apparently the engine was still running even with a lot of the oil leaking out. So he, I think just, it was very helpful to have been a NASCAR fan for so many years and to know something about car mechanics. My dad was a car mechanic, but anyway, um, he exited and had the car towed Okay, I'll get to that in just a second, Hannah. Had the car towed and and it was fixable. And because my husband pulled off immediately and shut the engine down, that saved the engine so it didn't burn up the engine. And it was one of these, um, like a diversion for the oil that goes to your part of the, the thing in your car that helps to cool the oil temperature and then reroutes it back. Well, apparently one of those hoses broke or something happened in more than half of the oil of the car went out quickly. So, um, but it's all back together and we didn't have to buy a new engine, which would have been bad because this car has about 200,000 miles on it, but it's a Toyota. So we're hoping to get at least another 50,000 miles out of this thing. It's um, it's about 11 years old, but 
we use it a lot to travel back and forth to South Carolina. So thank you. The car is back on the road and my husband's using it commuting back and forth. And our 24-year-old truck did very well helping Lana move. We have a Ford F-150 from my, my late father-in-law. So anyway, uh, let me get some of Hannah's questions here. Um... Okay, God bless America 2019. Would like to know what yarn winder do you use? Well, let me go ahead and show you. Just a minute, let me go grab it. That's a great question. Okay, this is what I use. It's, it's a large ball winder. It's by the company Stanwood. And there is actually a link in the video description below, it's an affiliate link, but um, it doesn't cost you any more if you click on that. And, um, and you know, this, this can come off for storage and the yarn comes through here. It goes through this little thing here and then, and then it wedges into the slit here. And then as you turn the handle for only one turn, you can see this thing goes around many, many, many times. This is much larger than a lot of the ones that I see that are much cheaper online. Uh, I've even seen yarn stores have smaller ones and not the big ones, but I tell you what, I, I've read a lot of reviews and I've heard from a lot of crafters who use the small ones. There may be some really great small ones out there, but they're generally all plastic. I mean, this has plastic too, but it's, it's been rock solid for me through several books. Um, and I have I have used this hundreds of times, I, I, I promise you. My first book, I wound everything by hand. After that, I felt led <laughs> to buy my own. And this, what I love about the larger one is it'll, it'll wind really big scans of yarn. So if you get, or hanks of yarn, if you get, you know, a hank that's like, you know, five or 600 yards, those little ones can't handle it. You're going to have to cut the yarn and then do two balls of yarn. Um, this, this can do just about anything. It's, it, it will, it's, it can handle a lot. So, and I think I've shown you, but, but the other ones, the other cheaper ones will work. I don't remember how much this was. Uh, let me, let me look it up real quick for you. I'm going to look this up. I guess I could have just clicked the link below, but I didn't. Let me see. Okay. Okay, that's not too bad, no. Okay. I'm seeing that it cost about $54, $54.85. That's on Amazon, if that's the right one. Yeah, so you're looking at between $50 and $60. Now you can get the small ones for about half of that. But but honestly, um, it, you know, it's it's whatever, it's whatever people want to do. But these things, you know, this... This is an investment and it has lasted a long, long time. And let me, let me get my Since you ask, I'll go ahead and take the Swift out as well. And I got my little, my little case for it. This came from Knit Picks. Again, video links are in the video description below. And this this attaches, okay, both of these, you need to have a table with at least a half an inch or an inch or so lip, you know, something to attach to it. And then this screws into, you know, screws into your table. You see how that goes on. So you, you really need to have a table like a workstation or something that you can connect it to. If, if, if it's one of those tables that goes to the edge and then flat down for a few inches, you're not gonna get this on there. Um, so I actually found this table for about $40 at my local Goodwill store. Love doing thrift shopping. So what happens with this? I'll see if I can keep from hitting myself in the face with it. This can move up and down to, to fit whichever size hank 
because when you unroll these, they can be different sizes. And then you just fit this and then and then you find the strings and just start rolling. And I do have a video demonstrating that that I did many years ago. So. But again, that's if you know, that's if you're buying the, you know, the finer yarns. You're not going to need to use that if you're using the the ones that you buy at Michaels generally. But then you then you roll up into balls like this, which are really nice. Nice and even and and again, I do have that other video on my channel. Just make sure that when you do that that um you don't want to roll up the yarn too too soon. You know, if it's something that you're going to do in a year or two, you probably want to wait and not roll the yarn up until, you know, within a week or two of, of, of when you're going to actually use the yarn so it doesn't, you know, pull on it too much. Okay, so let's go ahead and get out of that. Uh-oh, I need to, to back up here. Even with the slow-mo on the, the comments, I'm still woefully behind, but thank you guys for your understanding. Um, Hannah had another question. Let me, um, uh, April would like to know what is mercenized cotton? Um, it's been processed a little differently and I cannot be specific cause I really am not sure myself, April. I'm so sorry. I'll have to look it up. Well, let me, let me do that. Let me, let me do, let me look it up. Okay, it's a textile finishing treatment for cellulose fabric and yarn, cellulose meaning plant-based, um, mainly cotton and flax, which improves the dye uptake and tear strength, reduces fabric shrinkage, and imparts a silk-like luster. So it's a finishing treatment of some sort, um, and it just makes the yarn stronger. Now, for example, this yarn is not mercerized. Okay, this is just your worsted weight cotton that you can make dishcloths out of and stuff like that. It is not treated in that way. It's you know it just has a different hue to it. I mean it's not it's not shiny. Um, whereas you can see this has a little bit of a sheen. I mean you can't see it, but it has a little bit of a sheen to it. Uh, the uh, good loops cotton, the nurturing fibers, eco cotton and, and eco bamboo. I don't think, I don't know if that's mercerized either. I'd have to ask, I have to ask about it. So it is a, a treatment that is done. All right. I have to get back into my YouTube because it just it just quit on me. That is really weird. So give me a minute here. All right. And God bless America says, thanks for the ball winder info. I had a small one and took it back. That is a great price. Yeah, I think it is. Um I, you know, it, it, I, I know $50 is a lot of money. I know that that's a lot of money to some folks and it, it it's still a lot of money to me, but if it's something that I'm going to be using quite often and quite frequently and I need, it's like my car, I need it to start when I want it to start. Um, it's worth investing in it and just making sure that it's, it's something that's going to operate well. And the same reason why I like using higher end yarns is, I want it to be something that if it's something that I'm going to wear or bless somebody with, I want it to be something that's special and you know, it's going to last a little bit. Um, you know, it's going to be comfortable to the skin. And, um, you know, I sometimes you have to invest a little bit to get that. Jake Parker says, when I use my yarn winder, I put a piece of wood under the ball winder because the first time I used it, it scratched my table. Yeah, it will. Yeah, it can, you know, as it's clamp it's a metal clamp. If it's clamping down and that little metal thing too, you might want to put something underneath that because when it's going real fast, that can actually bounce the, the metal wire that it has a little loop 
that can can bounce on your table but this is this is a, an old a nice but old pine table and it's already got its its love nicks and you know places where it's been beat up it's a work table so that doesn't bother me um in, in my case but you definitely don't want to put it on your mom's really expensive oak table or or cherry table and wind your yarn you would probably want to you know get get it gets a workspace to do this um or you know if you have a a granite countertop yeah that's a nice lip and you you can't hurt granite at least i, I don't think you can um not with this thing so i mean that would be something you could do to do it at the kitchen if you've got a countertop like that i on the other hand do not we're still old style for mica here <laughs> um can't hurt that much either not anymore um Let's see. Jan says, that Swift is next on my Christmas list. Yeah, those, they have a really, and if you go to nitpicks, they have, I mean, or you can look at other, other sites too, but that's just one I'm familiar with. They have some fantastic looking woods for these. Not that you need, you know, you know, mahogany yarn winder or something like that, but they have one. I mean, they have these really beautiful things and they really are pretty. If you wanted to just leave it, if you had room in your craft room or, or extra space to have it set up all the time. It really is pretty to look at. Um, I, however, don't. So I just, you know, uh, I pull it out when I need and I, I put it away to protect it as well. Um, oh, thank you, Denise from Salisbury. You're so sweet. Um, well, thank you for getting her the, the pattern, Hannah. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, and Terry says, I have a table swift. It sits rather than clamp. Yeah, they those are those are really cool. I think they're like more the Amish style where they have the pegs that you can move the the swift and make it different sizes. They have some that actually sit on the table and then spin, you know, just on a flat surface. Um, that would be really harder for me though, because my tabletops are full of stuff. I'm even looking at my workspace right now for the, the studio. And um, I keep things in piles just to remind me. Uh, what would I do without my piles? Um, I'll tell you what happens when my piles disappear. I can't find anything. <laughs> um, so how many scans of yarn do you need to make the top behind you? Um, Kelly's asking, I think Hannah, Hannah sent you the Lovecrafts link. If you look at the, at the, at the information before, you don't even have to be purchase it to see this if you before you purchase it'll tell you exactly how many yards that you're going to need for this I think it's around a thousand yards I, I I'm all doing this off the top of my head which is dangerous um, but it's it's about a thousand or so yards depending if for about for a medium so if you want a larger size you know I'd say a thousand to twelve thirteen hundred yards uh, and depending on the yarn you use will determine how many you know balls you're going to need we have to you know always get that calculator out and, and figure that one out. Um, is there a large and small winder? Mrs. Con Ms. Condor is asking. Yes, they, they have um, different, different size ball winders, just depending on what you want. I, again, I highly recommend the large one just, just to be able to cover winding any kind of yarn. Like if you got the thicker, uh, rug yarn that my mom used to get. I don't know that the little ones would even handle that. But then again, I could be wrong. Brenda Max says, my winder and Swift are on the way. Just ordered a few days ago. Anxious to use it. Yeah, that was like Christmas for me one year. I, I decided I saw a sale on a nitpicks catalog and I'm like, Merry Christmas to me from me. <laughs> I just went ahead and ordered the ball winder from Amazon because that's the only place where I could find it. And uh, I've been very happy with them both. Let's see. All right. I'm going to just keep on going here. we got some more comments. I, I may have skipped some. I'm sorry if I skipped your comment. It's not intentional. I'm just trying to keep it going here. Uh, Terry says... Bonnie, have you tried Boyd Electric Ball Winder? It's nice. Have to be careful not to go too fast. I have not, and I have... Okay. 
Am I back? I think I may be back. Sorry, guys. I Let me make sure I'm back here. Yep, looks like I'm back. I had a child try to FaceTime me again, and I set that phone on no notifications. Ugh. So whatever. Um, let me see if I can refresh my page here. Ugh. Let me... Okay, so I just wanted to verify. Yeah, I'm back. So thank you, Hannah, for verifying. Sorry, guys. I I set my phone, which is what I use to broadcast. I mean, I just set it on do not disturb, period. But for some reason, it got through anyway, and it just disrupts it. But now I know what to do if that happens again. Um, it's <laughs> technology. <sighs> All right, so anyway, so sorry guys for that. Um, oh, let me just go ahead and say hey, a minor, minor expression of frustration. Um, all right, uh, we have is it Arpana from India. My goodness, thank you so much for joining us, even with all our little blips and stuff. Um, yes, we are back. Gotta run, have a happy fourth is what God Bless America says. Okay, you too. And um, <laughs> Lauren says, tell your brother to bug off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I need to go talk to him and just tell him that you're not allowed to call mommy during the sacred hour, right? <laughs> 12 to 1 or so. All right, so we're back. And I really have pretty much gone through everything that I had planned. But I did want to read something to you today. And uh, I'm going to try to get through it. Um, because I thought it would really encourage you kind of to go along with the, the red, white, and blue garment that I showed you. Uh, really, I really do really, 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 really do love this country. And, um, and, and thank you guys who are from outside the U.S. Thanks for being patient with me on this and our holiday. I know that people are watching from outside the U.S. And, and I, and I know that many of you have your special holidays in your country too. And I'm so happy so happy for that and um this is one that's particularly special to us and um, being a history student and teacher um just just really wanted to read a verse or two i think i'll just read one verse from our national anthem the star spangled banner but many of you may not know this but there are four stanzas to this uh, song, which was a poem written by Francis Scott, Scott Key. And what's really fun about this is we live near Baltimore, near, um, near the place where that inspired the writing of this poem, which was later put to a song and again, you know, made the, the uh, Star Spangled Banner. But um, it's up at Fort McHenry. And if you all ever get to the Washington DC, Baltimore area, it's kind of an out of the out of the way place to visit, but it's well worth the visit. They even have a visitor center there and everything now, which they didn't use two years ago. I remember having at least one or two birthday parties for my children there that were very special to me. Um, it was the fort that was under attack um, during the, um, the War of 1812, I believe it was. Oh gosh, I hope I get this right. Um, I should. But, um, but anyway, we were there and they, they took out the flag. They took out a flag that was the same size as what we call Old Glory, the original flag that, that flew there on this particular day is in the American National, the Smithsonian National History Museum. So if you ever get to Washington, D.C., you can see it. It used to hang on the outside of the building for many years and people used to take a little piece of it as a souvenir. This was many, like more than a hundred years ago, but or probably more like 150 years ago or more. But, um, but anyway, the, they had a, a replica and they brought it out and our kids uh, and birth people who came for our birthday party, um, we, we kind of, what we did for birthday parties back then, we'd load people into our 15 passenger van and we would just go on a field trip together and not necessarily the Chuck E. Cheese or something, you know, pre-organized. We would just do it ourselves and, and just go on a field trip. And that was one that we did. And they let us participate in putting up this flag. And my goodness, this flag was terrible, wonderful, but terribly oversized for the flagpole that it flew on at Fort McHenry. And it was kind of a statement 
Um, they were un undermanned. Um, the, the odds against beating the British were just not in our favor back during this particular conflict. And the flag, when they put that flag up, it was like shaking your fist, you know, in front of your enemy's face saying, go ahead and try to hit this. And it, that it was a huge flag. Um, so it just has a lot of, lot of a special meaning for our history. But anyway, so these words were written um, after surviving a horrible night of being bombarded with cannonballs and explosives and stuff like that. So, so that, ugh, hmm. okay, keep it, keep it together, Bonnie. <laughs> All right. So this is the last verse in the song. You're familiar with the first, with the rocket's red glare and all of that. Well, and this is the end. And I love it because it shows where their trust was. And it wasn't in their ability and it wasn't in their self, themselves. Oh, thus be it ever, hmm, when free men shall stand between their loved home and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heaven rescued land. Praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must when our cause it is just. And this be our motto, in God is our trust. Sorry. And the Star Spangled Banner in triumph shall wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. Sorry, there's so much going through my mind right now. But um, yeah, this is just a great song. Um, so anyway, I hope that blessed you all. I know, you know, thanks again for those of you who live outside the U.S. putting up with that for now. But, um, you know, both of my parents are at Arlington National Cemetery. So this this means a lot. Um, this means a lot to me. So anyway, mm, whew, sorry, guys. <laughs> you know me. And thanks for your patience. I uh, I wish I could get through without that, but that's just that's just the way I am. Well, anyway, um, just a reminder again for those of you tuned in later. Um, the next two Fridays, I'm going to be off doing something different, um, anniversary on the 16th, and then teaching the CGOA class all day on the 9th. And again, the seats are still available for that. And there are also seats still available for the one later in July. But, um, so my plan right now, I will see you in, golly, three weeks. July 23rd will be the next broadcast for the Friday Fun Live. So I just, just, just hope you have a wonderful couple weeks, wonderful summer. Stay safe. And as always, God bless you guys. Bye-bye.